I first discovered minimalism in 2016 when I was reading The Minimalist blog and then read their book called Everything That Remains. In retrospect, I call the summer of 2016 my granola summer because this was the year that I really got invested in sustainability and being more environmentally friendly and owning less stuff. And I really went hardcore into it because I was still a student at the time living in a dorm. And so it's not like I had much room for stuff anyway. In 2016, I didn't buy any new clothes instead opting for thrifting only. This is also the year that I went vegetarian. And at different points in the summer, I even experimented with not using shampoo anymore because shampoo is a corporate ruse. <laughs> and so I only washed my hair with baking soda and apple cider vinegar. And truth be told, that did not last very long um, for obvious reasons. No matter what the Pinterest articles say, it does not work the same way. I don't care. Give me the sulfates and the silicone. I want to be able to brush through my hair without the brush getting stuck. So in 2016, I was deep into my minimalism kick. I had donated all the clothes that I wasn't really wearing anymore and opted for a complete black, white, and denim wardrobe. I had a ton of different black and white striped shirts. And that's pretty much all that I wore. And as much as I have continued to have an interest in minimalism, and I feel like that has manifested in different ways in my life, I must admit that I have sort of fallen off the bandwagon. As I graduated and got married, moved into my own apartment that I now own, with my partner. It's been a lot easier to kind of just accumulate more stuff. But more and more recently, I've become more interested in reinvigorating my minimalism, partly because I've spent the last year and a half pretty much inside these four walls in this 500 square foot condo. And I just know I don't need all this stuff. The thing about having a small space is that it fills up rather quickly and so there are a lot of corners of this home that are disorganized to say the least. And because I spend all my time here, I work here, I really need a clear space in order to focus and be productive. And so the time has finally come after so much procrastinating to try to become a minimalist again. <coughs> It's important to mention at this point that minimalism isn't all about just getting rid of stuff. It's actually really important that you start by just not buying more stuff, which is something that I kind of have embraced most of the time since 2016. I've never really been a big shopping for fun person. And in terms of clothes specifically, I haven't got any new clothes since March when I got this shirt along with a few other things from Big Bud Press. And then a few weeks later, I got my favorite new t-shirt, which is my dinosaur shirt from the thrift shop. So that kind of gives you a sense of my consumption. It's now July, haven't bought any new clothes since March, even then just got a few things. So I really don't bring a lot of new stuff into the apartment. I think we've just seen the natural accumulation of things that you do over several years. And like I said, it's not a lot of space. So the important thing to note, if you are also coming along on this journey with me is don't just start getting rid of a lot of stuff so that you can buy more. We're getting rid of stuff so that we have less stuff. And we start this journey by just not buying so much stuff anymore. And now that I've told you my story as a wannabe minimalist, let's get into the decluttering process. Okay. I would be lying if I didn't say that I'm dreading this a little bit, partially because I know this is going to be a ton of work and partially because um, I'm kind of embarrassed to show you how many clothes I have and how disorganized they are. So a big part of the reason why I'm doing this is because these drawers, this is where I'm working out of every day. The closet, I hardly set foot in the closet um, because it's mostly clothes that I never wear and are overly formal for working from home. But kind of what spurred this on is that these are all <laughs> a pain to open because of how full they are. So we're just gonna start by literally taking everything known to man 
out of these drawers. This drawer is kind of the sad part because it's all my workout clothes and I used to make use of these back in the before times when I could go to my bar classes, my yoga classes. I, don't, I can't work out from home. I can't do that. I've tried and it has not gone well. See me coming. They never hear us. We're in the closet. Pretty much everything in here, well, there's like four or so items here at the front of the closet that I will sometimes wear. As you can see, we kind of have a bit of a step-in closet here. It was advertised as a walk-in, but in this economy, kind of from the red jumpsuit forward are things that I actually will sometimes wear. So I'll, I'll bring those things out for consideration. Okay, that's pretty much all my clothes with the exception of uh, Big Red over here, cause she, she gets to stay hung up because she's special and obviously we're keeping her. I guess that was the easy part. Oh boy. I am definitely not going with the spark joy method because um, some things I think are just practical and you need them. Like this pair of socks does not spark joy, but I need them um, because it keeps me from getting blisters when I wear my docks with these socks. These jeans are high quality, practical, good old Levi's. They are a little bit big on me, but they work. And um, do you know how damaging denim is on the environment? It's not great. So if I can make do with these jeans, I definitely don't need to get another pair. This is the rationale that I use when deciding what to keep. And also, I just know that these things fit me. I think an important part of this would be trying stuff on if um, you haven't worn it in a long time, but I've worn both of those things pretty recently. And yeah, I'm starting off with the things that I know for sure I wanna keep, and then we'll go through the questionable stuff later. Love these bell bottoms. I think I will probably roll these eventually. If I talked you through the entire process, this would take hours, so let's let's montage this. I'm gonna get up my headphones, listen to my Outlander audiobook, and we'll check in. We'll check in then a little bit. Okay, so we're through pretty much all of the bottoms, and I don't really have any for sure giveaways yet. This is my maybe pile. I love these red gingham overalls, like shorteralls, I guess. But I bought them from a secondhand store when I was in like grade 10 or 11. Um, so I've had them for 10 years and they don't really fit anymore. They're really quite tight. Um, so I can wear them, but I'm not sure. And these gray sort of baggy culottes I bought from a sustainable local store a couple years back and they're quite comfy but they're kind of heavy for what they are because they're cropped but kind of heavy um so they're kind of weird in terms of like what season to wear them in and I don't find myself wearing them very often but I've held on to them even from a past time when I thought about donating because I bought them from a sustainable retailer and they were kind of expensive, but somebody else might enjoy them more than me. And then I have two pairs of jeans, one that I think I might turn into shorts because they're getting a little bit rough and I would like to have some black jean shorts and these are long pants. And then one pair of skinny jeans that I think I've also had since high school that are a little bit tight. But otherwise I've got this stack of jeans, this stack of different like fabric kind of pants, and then this stack of shorts, which is, is just two pairs because I'm wearing my third pair of shorts right now. <laughs> so decisions, decisions. I think for now I'm going to put away the stuff that I know I'm going to keep and then I will keep thinking about the maybes.
let's do shirts now. As it turns out, I've been able to achieve quite a lot of organization and tidiness without actually having my to get rid of pile grow all that much. So it turns out maybe I have been a minimalist this whole time. It's just that I've been a messy one. So that's good. I do think that the get rid of pile is gonna grow a little bit once we tackle these guys. And also the remaining pile of gym clothes that I have not gone through yet. So we'll see how that goes, but so far I'm feeling good. I really like that I have all my clothes in like a single layer, because it's really important to me that I can see everything when I open the drawer so that I actually know what my options are, rather than just seeing the top two things that I have shoved in there that I just wear over and over again. So going well so far, even though I don't actually have a lot of stuff that I'm gonna get rid of and I'm feeling a little bit uncertain about some of these because when I tried on some of the pants, I was like, oh, maybe I actually should keep them. But anyway, I actually do still have an empty drawer at the very bottom of this. So there is room for some overflow, um, like for where I'm gonna put my shorts and stuff. So, okay, might need another coffee, but we're gonna keep going. that I literally hate bra inserts. I have millions of them here because <laughs> I take them out of every sports bra or bralette that I have because I hate them. They move around when you wash stuff and they often end up in a weird spot and I just take them out. a minimalist again is definitely gonna be a series because you know your girl couldn't get it all done in one day. Should I tackle my kitchen cupboards, my fridge, my laptop and my digital space, or maybe even the dreaded storage locker? Let me know in the comments which I should do next. And of course, make sure that you're subscribed and that you hit the notification bell so that you don't miss it when I go on my next satisfying decluttering adventure. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are having adventures and following your dreams and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.